Stephanie. This is Stream Time with Stephanie. I can't wait to get started today. I teach at Tops K-8, which is um, in East Lake, and I teach fourth through eighth grade orchestra. I really miss teaching my orchestra kids at school every day um, because technology is sometimes my friend and sometimes not, which I'm sure that's you too. Like today, um, a student needed... What did some, print out something or needed, oh, needed me to write or um, write something for them. So I was going to do that, but I couldn't print it out from my phone and then I couldn't get it on my school computer. So then I just have to retype the whole thing, which is fine and I'm happy to do that, but I'm sure that you have similar, similar issues at your, wherever you are. And it, it's just a learning curve for us all. So thanks for being patient. And the one thing that makes it better is playing music for me. So I'm excited to do that with you today. So today's week focus is going to be on finger pattern, finger pattern number one and finger pattern number two. Some of that might be review for you um, or new. And either way, we can always learn and practice even though we are not... Um, Maybe it's not something like, like, oh, super new, but it's really cool because if somebody says it in this one way or like whenever I go to a new teacher, they can say something. I'm like, it's like I've never heard it before, but of course I have heard that many times, but they just have said it in a way that makes a lot of sense. So I hope that's what's happening here for you today. We've, before we get started, I have a joke for you. Are you ready? What do we call a pod of musical whales? An orchestra. <laughs> So funny, right? Anyway, we are going to need to get out our instrument now, and we're going to need to get out a piece of paper and a pencil if you want to write some notes down. Um, if you have a packet or your essential elements book, you might want to get that out too. Um, but mostly you just need your instrument, and go ahead and get it out now. All right, now we're going to talk about what finger pattern one and finger pattern two looks like on the cello. So we have already learned finger pattern number one, probably. It's the first thing we do. And that means that we're going to start with putting our first finger on the D string to make the note E. Then we're going to use our third finger to make the note F sharp and then our fourth finger to make the note G. So we're skipping over our second finger. That's finger pattern number one, D, E, F sharp, G. That is what we have for finger pattern number one on the cello. For finger pattern number two on the cello, we're actually just gonna use our second finger. So we're gonna skip over our third finger. Pretty easy if you can remember in your brain. And sometimes I talk to my fingers, I say, don't, oop, finger number two. And that will really help you in this case whenever you see the note F or F sharp to say the finger number. So we have open, D, one finger for E, two fingers for F natural, and then big reach up for four for G. It's still in the same tape position or in the same place on the fingerboard, the note E and the note G. It's just that second finger, and that second finger is going to live right between your first and third finger for that note F natural, okay? It is important to remember that when we play an F natural, we have to really reach up for that G. The tendency is to not reach up high enough. Do you see how my finger didn't get the, all the way up to the tape? So the big work for you is gonna be playing second finger, big reach up for four. Second finger, second finger in the pattern number two, and then big reach up for four. So that's finger pattern number one and finger pattern number two. All right, now it's time to work out those muscles. Mm -mm. Just kidding. We are not gonna do that kind of workout. We're gonna work out our finger muscles to play our string instrument. So put out your finger in the hand and we're gonna move back and forth between our second and third finger. We're gonna open, in, and out, and in, and out, and in and out, in, 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 out. Yeah, <laughs> back and forth. Good. 
Now let's go between our second, our first and second finger. In, out, in, out, in, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. Which one was easier for you? My first and second were definitely easier for me. I cannot do my pinky. Well, kind of. Um, those are some exercises that I think you should be doing as warm-ups. When you do your scale every day when you practice, that's something that you should definitely also take into consideration. It's just warming up those fingers, getting them all strengthened, getting them ready to play. All right, now we have our instruments. We're ready to start with practicing some echoing of our finger pattern number one, which you already know, and finger pattern number two. So before we do that, we need to talk about pop, which is perfect orchestra posture, or P-O-P, -P, all right? Now, P-O-P -P is really important when we're playing a string instrument because that's how we get the best sound. So we're gonna make sure that if we're playing the cello, our feet are in a V. You know, you kind of would stand up with your feet about, um, in yoga we call that hip width apart, so about, you know, a little space between your feet. Turn in like a V so your heels are facing each other, your, your toes are sticking out like this, and then we have our cello in between our knees, not on top of our knees, because that makes our cello too far away from us, and not tilted sideways, not like that, none of those things. It's just right there sitting in between our knees, we're hugging our cello, we can rock back and forth, perfect orchestra posture when the cello pop. Then our shoulders are straight, we're not hunched forward, shoulders are straight, our spine is, is straight from there. And then we have our thumb right in that back position, resting in the middle, Yep, you've got it, pop. And then we have our playing on our fingertips and we have our cello wings. These are our birdie wings, da 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 just kidding. Um, but we don't wanna be too crouchy like this. We don't wanna be too tight like this because that's gonna get really tiring when we play. We just wanna have nice, relaxed, relaxed shoulders. Good, your wings, yeah. You can drop your bow arm elbow a little bit if you want, that's fine. Good, echo with me please, my turn first and then you right away. Like I play, I play, I play, I play, you play, you play, you play, you play, you got it, my turn. D, D, E, E, we're on the D string. Good, now starting on E, and we're gonna go to three fingers F sharp. Good, now. That's great, let's try a little bit harder. Starting on open D. Good, again. Yeah, you gotta add some eighth notes in there. Cool. Now let's try finger pattern number two. Yeah, we're on the same first finger tape. D, D, E, F natural. Some of you could hear that that's what I did, and some of you are watching, and both of those are really good ways to figure out what's happening. Open D, first finger, and then I use second finger. Finger pattern number number two. Awesome, my turn first. I'm gonna start on E now. Good. Yeah, you were to play F natural and G or two fingers and four. One of the hardest things is making sure that we really reach up for that fourth finger because it feels so far away. We're used to just putting it down from our third finger, but two to four feels like a big step. So we're gonna try that again. Put down open, then one, and then two. Good, right in between the tapes. That's it. When you're at home, you can practice your finger patterns now, and I would just go back and forth. Just keep playing them. Create new patterns on your own, but remember that practicing between the second finger and that big stretch for the fourth finger is something you can do this week.
All right, now that we've done our echoing, we're ready to take care of something called Mary Has a Little Lamb. And you might have this in your Essential Elements book on page eight, or you might have it in the packet, or you can just follow along on the screen and follow along by ear. But we're gonna be playing Mary Has a Little Lamb, and that's gonna be in finger pattern number, number one, because it has the note F sharp. And it starts on F sharp, F sharp, E, D, E, F sharp. So let's play along together now. Here we go. One, two, one, two, ready, go. <laughs> review for a lot of you and that is A-OK. -okay. If not, that gives you something to work on in finger pattern number one with pop. Now we're going to try, i got to get my little hamster hidey hole set and pop now. Now we're going to try Mary lost her little lamb. Poor Mary. And that means we're going to use an F natural in finger pattern number two. So here we go. Go on the string. Make sure you're really only using second fingers. We're not going to go to our third finger. One, two, one, two, F, natural, go. <laughs> you to focus on pop and I want you to focus on using that second finger on your cello. Great job, that was so fun working with you today. I hope you learned something, I hope you had fun, I hope you reverted how to hold your instrument and did all those things. I know that sometimes when you hear it from somebody else it helps or sometimes you're like, oh I know that, that's great. And then you can feel so proud of yourself for all the things that you've done. Like, I'm so proud of you. You know what you could do? Is you could try to play Baby Shark with both finger pattern number one and finger pattern number two, like D, E, G, 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 D, E, G, 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 D, E, G, 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 F sharp, or F sharp, finger pattern number one, or D, E, G, 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 D, E, G, 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 D, E, G, 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 F natural, and you could turn it into minor. And that's what we're doing when we use finger pattern number one or finger pattern number two, in this case on the violin, viola, or cello. So awesome job. I know your teachers really miss you, and maybe you should take a picture of yourself practicing and send it to them. I'm sure they would love that. All right, have a great week. I'll see you next time.